Welcome to Towing Mad. In this episode, we swap caravans for sailboats as we embark on a journey to cross St George's Channel in the Irish Sea. So to the moon, my dad's boat is moored up at Hollyhead. It's a 33-foot sailing yacht, category A, a vessel capable of crossing oceans. It's a six-berth yacht. We'll just be a two-man crew for this trip. Keen to get going, we're up at daybreak at 5am on the Friday morning. We stayed over on the boat and managed to grab about four or five hours sleep. We had a few checks and a few bits and pieces that we needed to do before we could set off. I like an early ride anyway, but it was really special being up early on the boat. So it's a windy start to the day. I'm just uh, beyond sunrise now. I'm going to set off. Plan is to cross the Irish Sea, St George's Channel, out to uh, from going from Holyhead to Greystones in Ireland. We've got the marina booked, so they're expecting us. Um, conditions looking like they're going to be quite strong early morning and then they're going to um, calm down in the afternoon today but then tomorrow is looking a bit dicey. It's looking like there's um, some strong winds coming tomorrow so we may have to return on Sunday, we'll have to play it by it. We've got around 60 nautical miles to travel in pretty much a westerly direction. The wind's forecast to be pushing us south but the tides are pushing us north. We'll have to maintain the best course we possibly can. We're planning on motor sailing to try and do it in under 12 hours. Breeze today, so we're looking forward to getting up some speed. We've got plenty of power in the sails. When we clear the harbour, we've got two waypoints marked on our passage plan, and then we've got one long straight sail through to Greystones. We cleared the harbour. It was breezy and there was a bit of a swell leaving Anglesey. There wasn't anybody else about really, it was just us. After we cleared the harbour, we came around Anglesey to South Stack, where there's a lighthouse visible for about 24 miles in the dark. After about an hour, we pretty much found our course and we were making good progress. We were soon joined by a Stenner ferry. It's difficult to make out, but I do zoom in here, you can see that the ferry is about 10 miles away. It gets picked up on the navigation system and you can find details of what the ship's called, where it's going, what its course is and at what speed it's travelling. We had the headsail up, we put the mainsail out and we had the motor on. So we were making about six and a half, sometimes up to seven knots. For those watching that are new to sailing, it's a fine technique that you have to try and catch the wind in the sail and maintain the best course you possibly can. Even with the motor on, it's not possible to go in an exact straight line to go to where you want to go towards your destination. So you have to go to the best line that will take you towards your destination. Well, the weather's been fantastic, nice and sunny now. Right in the middle of the Irish Sea. Nothing around us for miles and miles. Not a ship, not, not um, a ferry, nothing. Absolutely, just nothing but sea. As we continued the voyage, we got really lucky and a pod of porpoises or dolphins came up alongside the boat. There were about five or six of them. They were clearing the water and crisscrossing at the bow. I think it goes to show the really playful nature. I have no idea why they swim along with the boat, but it made it really special, magical. It was really difficult trying to capture the moment, but I just about get it on camera here in just a moment. Seemed like a cracking opportunity to grab a nice cold beer. Why not? So, my first real experience of sailing. I've been on boats when I've been away, you know, motor boats, stuff like that. Rented a couple of motorboats in Spain as well. Um, but the first real uh, experience on a sailing boat, what I can say is um, there's a real vastness. I mean, the, the Irish Sea is relatively small, and you know, the St George Channel is a relatively small part of the, of the Irish Sea. But even out here, you know, which is not that far between England and Ireland, um, 
all you can see is, is water. In fact, I can just start to see island on the horizon now that I've said that. But yeah, you, you really feel very small and insignificant out here in this vast sea with nothing else around. And the only thing that's passed is a couple of stand lines about 10 kilometers away. Um, and there was a, um, another pair of guys coming out on a sailboat just behind us. They, they were probably about 10, 10 miles behind us. But we've not seen anything else, no helicopters, no uh, planes, no boats other than the Stenners, that's it. Um, Irish ferries and Stenner ferries. Yeah, what a great experience. And the dolphins swimming alongside the boat really just a bit of an icing on the cake for that one. That was absolutely fantastic seeing that. So gracious swimming alongside the boat. Beautiful to see. The navigation systems on the boat were really fantastic. It was everything you wanted to know about course, bearing, depth, speed. There's also a really useful AIS system as well, which could tell you about which other vessels were in range. As we approached Ireland, the skipper raised the trick alert, the Irish flag. We'd been sailing about 11 hours. We had to drop the mainsail because we lost power really halfway across. So why have you raised an Irish trick alert on an English boat? The Irish trick alert is a courtesy flag. You raise the flag of the country that you're visiting starboard spreader as a form of greeting and gesture to recognise that we're in, in their international waters. We still have our red ensign, which is the boat registration in the UK. Now we're paying lip service to the Irish uh, country of the Republic of Ireland. And when we go back to Hollyhead, we raise the Welsh Dragon. Although it might look close, we were still some ways out here. It might be around 10 miles. It's very deceptive without anything in the foreground. Landmarks and other boats can seem very close, but can actually be 5, 10, 15, even 20 miles away. The crew made it to shore and we had some guests. We're just at Greystones now. There was a real weather front came in. Absolutely howling the wind was um, this morning. Rain pouring down. So we were intending to stay today um, and then go home tomorrow. But the weather's um, really improved. So what that means is that we're going to make the passage now. Um, it's uh, currently uh, 10 to 4. So we're going to set off pretty soon. Fuel up. We're going to need the most to the part of the way. We're going to do a night passage. And um, yeah, we're going to basically try and, and get back to Anglesey tonight. And then uh, that, that kind of brings us back on, on the track where we were expecting to be. Okay, ready to set sail back to Wales. This is uh, the Bavaria 33. It's actually 34 feet long, 10 metres, with a 2 metre draft. It should be capable at 6, 6.5 knots to full sail, with a main sail and a jib. Ready to set sail, just going to fill up with some diesel and we're off. So coming out of Greystones, it was a little bit choppy after Storm Anthony, but we knew that once we got out into the sea, things would calm down. Because we were doing a night passage, we decided we were going to motor sail, so we just used the head sail and the motor. This also meant we could put the tent area up at the back of the boat to keep us dry. Some showers were forecasted, and you can see some pretty menacing clouds on the horizon. Current generally moves across from Ireland to England, so that helped us, and there was a good bit of power in that head sail. Just with the motor at 2000 revs and the head sail, we were actually making five and a half, six knots, so a really good speed. There were some ferries around, and we were checking on the navigation system. The sunset was absolutely fantastic. Really nice to witness the sunset out at sea. Because of the storm there was a few ferries out, a few fishing boats also. I think everybody was delayed and had to come out at night time instead of during the day. Morning, it's uh, 8.15 in the morning on Sunday. Uh, we got back in last night about half one. When we came in it was pitch black. A bit tricky to pick up a boy, we managed to get moored up on the first available boy. So yeah, we, we safely made it across island and back. Uh, just in the uh, marina, all we had now. 
this whole peaceful day, nothing much going on. Um, yeah, you can just see all the ships, all, all the boats moored up behind me. And if I turn to the stern here, you can just see in the distance, just here, this is a stellar line. So uh, we saw that coming in last night. Um, it, it came speeding past us, although it was only a mile away, it felt like it was right upon us. A um, bit busy on the seas last night, and um, that traffic kind of made things a little bit exciting as well. So all in, a fantastic experience. Maybe we'll circumnavigate Anglesey, or get off to the Island Man and get round the island there. Thanks very much for watching, we've been towing mad.